So tomorrow morning at 5.15, I'm supposed to be at the hospital um, to get ready for my surgery uh, for a, let's see if I can pronounce this right, a esophagectomy. And for those of you that don't know what that is, uh, it is basically where they take your esophagus out due to cancer being somewhere in there and they take us uh, they take your stomach and they form it into a tube and they pull it up into your throat and reattach it so they've removed your esophagus and hopefully all the cancer cells with it and you your stomach you still have a stomach except it's been surgically altered to this long tube so all your food when you eat it um, as soon as it gets past here it's basically in in your stomach from here all the way down to where it connects to the colon um, it's pretty serious operation uh, you know fortunately uh, you know I've gone on the internet and I've looked at a lot of forums and and sites where you know people are discussed you know that have discussed their their battle with this and what the side effects are and so forth so I thought I would do a video um, of what is really involved in this procedure and the recovery and so forth so um, we'll see how it goes uh, the thing I'm worried about the most is stroking out on the operating table uh, <laughs> what else can there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, my my fate is in the hands of the doctors, and you know, I guess whatever comes. So it's it's been uh, it's been surreal. This whole experience is surreal. Um, the thing that makes it surreal is I feel a hundred percent perfect. I'm 53 years old. I'll be 54 in. 10 days uh, and I've never had any health issues I've never smoked never done drugs um, active not overweight it's, uh, this cancer is non-discriminating discriminating so uh, so it's yeah it's very hard to believe usually you know, when you go into surgery, it's like, oh, I'll go into surgery and I'll fix something that's hurting uh, and I'll be better afterwards. It's just odd for me to go into surgery when I'm feeling so good and I'm gonna come out not feeling so good. But the whole end goal here, I have to keep focusing on and that's the removal of cancer. If I don't go in and have it removed, then the uh, cancer cells, which are Cygna cells, which are very aggressive, don't do well with chemo or radiation, and it can spread very quickly, uh, microcellular levels throughout your whole body. So right now they believe it's contained in the esophagus, um, and that's really why they wanna go about doing this. Because I was having trouble swallowing for so long, I uh, was kind of ignoring it, and that's what I recommend to, to anyone out there that feels anything going on with them is to go go ch get it checked out. Uh, hopefully you you know you have insurance and you can do it. it. It's you know some people are afraid to go to the doctor because they're afraid that the doctor might find something. But that's when you want to find it. You want to find it early. You want to find it before it develops and gets worse. Because if you can find it early with today's technology, they can treat it and and and. F and fix it before before it's too late anyway uh, so how I went and found it I was at work and a news feed popped up saying you know five signs that, that you may have esophageal cancer and I went oh that's interesting and because I've had the throat issue I thought well let me look at that so I looked at it and I don't remember what all five of them were um, I think it said fatigue um, which not really um, but the two that jumped out at me was trouble swallowing and the thing that really got me was uh, coughing after you eat 
And I thought, that is a really weird symptom for someone to write down as a symptom because that's what was happening to me. After I would eat, I would cough for a little bit. And I never thought anything of it. I just thought uh, I was just coughing. But when, that, when I read those two together, I went, holy shit, I need to go see a doctor and see what's going on. So I went to the doctor and they ran a scope down my throat and they said that they found uh, a polyp and they did a biopsy and uh, it came back cancerous. So you can imagine my surprise. Um, not knowing, you know, not having, you always think it's going to happen to somebody else and <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't always work that way. Um, so anyway, so it came back cancerous. Uh, we went and saw a specialist, um, Dr. Oschlager at the University of Washington in Seattle. Uh, and then he brought up uh, the surgery procedure that I'm going through tomorrow. Um, and uh, he said, well, what we, could, what we could do is we could go down and do uh, endoscopy, back down your throat and do a resection of the bad area and see if we can get it all because it's con they believe it's contained into one area. Um, by that time, I had a PET CT, a regular CT, blood test, and all kinds of stuff, and, and they really didn't see anything on any of those, so they believed it was isolated to one area. So they went, uh, so they went in, they took a section out, uh, did a biopsy, they saw the cancer cells, they thought that they got all of it, but one of the, some of the cells are close to the edge of where they were doing the dissection or resection or whatever it's called. Um, so they wanted to go back in a couple months later. Um, so they went back in a couple months later to see if they got it all and they did a biopsy and it came back negative. And I was like, oh, that's great. Out of the woods, caught it early. And they said, well, let's wait three months and we'll go back in and we'll double check and make sure it's good. And if it's good this time, we'll wait six months. And if it's good six months, we'll wait a year. So I said, great. So they went in feeling confident that they would get it all. And they gave me a call. And uh, that was at my, my first day at my new job. They called me and said that cancer was back. Um, I, and, and he said that he couldn't do anything more as far as removing, keep going down and removing pieces. And that surgery was my only option other than just ignoring it. And that really wasn't an option because it would spread and in five years or less everybody's different it could spread radically in two years I could be gone or five years or you know who knows miraculous miraculously goes away doubtful do I want to roll the dice and think that it may go away <laughs> I thought long and hard about that uh, but I figured uh, no I need to I want to get get it out of there and the doctor feels pretty confident that they going in and doing that they should I mean they're removing a good portion of my insides or rearranging it so anyway that's that's what's happening right now